So we're hired by Flatiron West as the tunneling subcontractor on the Lagos Creek project. Uh, we're advancing a 2200 foot long tunnel, uh, roughly 16 foot diameter. The job will serve as a stormwater bypass uh, for the existing stormwater infrastructure. Currently, the existing stormwater infrastructure flows right through downtown Morgan Hill and will flood downtown uh, during a extreme rain event. So this job is part of a global uh, stormwater infrastructure uh, project to increase the capacity of that system. So what the Lagos Creek project is, is really bypassing that whole segment of the creek and putting it into a system of a box culvert and the tunnel. DrillTech mobilized to the project in August of 2021. We spent about three months installing the temporary shoring and sound wall around the North Portal area. From there, we started to advance the tunnel in February 2022. Most of the tunnel is excavated with a road header. Uh, so our typical cycle for the road header will be to advance the road header anywhere from 15 to 25 feet. As we advance, we systematically install steel sets every four to five feet. The road header itself uh, conveys spoils from the heading uh, back behind itself into a haul truck and then the haul truck will bring the spoils out of the tunnel and dump it into our muck pile. Uh, for the most part the soil has been better than we expected out here and it's been great for road header work. The other material that we encountered on this job site and mostly in the tunnel extension was softer clay material. Uh, the clay is a mixture of alluvium and colluvium, crushed rock. Once we got to that point, it became more efficient for us to switch over to just excavating with a, a small mini excavator. So with that sequence, we've got a three and a half ton excavator digging out the tunnel profile ahead. And then we've got the haul truck and or mucker uh, pulling out dirt behind it. I think our biggest problem that we've had out here has been uh, the groundwater coming into the tunnel. And that's mostly come in uh, in this last portion of the project. With the historic rainfall that we've seen in California over the last few weeks, we've had uh, an enormous amount of groundwater coming into the tunnel. Uh, and so we've had to really adapt a system that has been successful uh, processing very low volumes of water. And you know, our, I think our, our tunnel discharge rate has probably gone up by three times since then. So having to adapt to that and having to have you know, our guys work in not ideal conditions. They're you know, waist deep in water and mud sometimes and you know, it's really challenging for the guys. So I think overall that's probably been one of the hardest parts of the job. had low overburden, so we probably had, I would say, anywhere from 15 feet down to six feet of cover above the tunnel, which from a tunneling aspect, you know, you want cover over, your, over the top of your tunnel so that you have the arching effect. So really, we have low cover tunneling, plus we have an active residential road right above us. Um, so we had to implement, you know, additional controls like drilling canopy tubes, um, systematic excavation to ensure that we weren't settling anything above us. One of the challenges that we face is making sure that we maintain good survey control. What that entails is first on the front end, uh, aligning our survey with the global survey of the project. So collecting control points, shooting control points, and adjusting our model 
to ensure that the tolerance that we have is spot on. So what we do is we have our surveyor in the tunnel constantly checking the alignment. Uh, he shoots the, each steel set as they're installed and as built them. He's also checking convergence to make sure that the tunnel is not uh, squeezing in on itself. What's critical here is that once we punch through, the tunnel matches perfectly with the structure that we're holing through in. When we tunnel through today, we'll be tunneling into the completed box culvert that Flatiron has uh, constructed downstream. Um, so essentially what we're tunneling into is the shoring for that system and we'll punch through right into their box culvert. What's struck me the most on this crew is that they're all of one mind and singly focus on how to do the task at hand as efficiently as possible. They usually do it without even saying anything to each other. They all know what needs to be done. Um, one thing that's unique about the tunneling crew that we have out here is everybody's working out of town. You know, these guys are working long hours, 10, 12 hours a day, five to six days a week and they're all away from their families the whole time. So it's a huge sacrifice that these guys, you know, uh, are, are given to us to make sure that the job gets done. And we really appreciate them. And, you know, it's, it's really a testament to these guys that we've gotten this far and been able to, to hold through today.